ascent of sacrifice, the second chapter, the works of love and the works of life. So what Sivarana has done in the first, uh, the previous chapter, chapter five, he has applied the concept of sacrifice to the works of knowledge. Now he is going to discuss the works of love, that is Bhakti Yoga, and the works of life, which is Karma Yoga. So let us start reading. <laughs> One of you can start reading. <clears throat> Sunki, you can start today. <laughs> Sir, Go ahead. Yes, I will read. Yeah. The ascent of the sacrifice to the works of love, ah. the works of life. Hmm. It is therefore through the sacrifice of love, works, and knowledge with the psychic being as the leader and priest of the sacrifice that life itself be transformed into its own true spiritual figure. If the sacrifice of knowledge, rightly done, is easily the largest and purest offering we can bring to the highest, the sacrifice of love is not less demanded of us for our spiritual perfection. It is even more intense and rich in its, single, in its singleness and can be made not less vast and pure. This pure wideness, this pure wideness is brought into the intensity of the sacrifice of love when into all our activities there is a port and there is a port the spirit and power of divine infinite joy and the whole atmosphere of our life is suffused with an engrossing adoration of the one who is the all and the highest for then does the sacrifice of love attains its utter perfection when offered to the divine all it becomes integral, catholic, and boundless, and, and when uplifted to the supreme, it ceases to be the weak, official, and transient to movement, men, men, call love, and, men call love, and becomes a pure and grand and deep uniting ananda. Yeah. Okay. Half a page paragraph, and we'll see, we'll go through quickly. He's comparing the path of love and the path of knowledge. It is therefore through the sacrifice of love. So we must remember the word sacrifice is being used in the sense of the Gita, Yajna. And Yajna also, this is a slight different uh, uh, meaning uh, given to it. It is not the traditional Yajna where you sit around a fire, a holy fire, you build an altar and then you build a uh, a, a square where you put fuel and then you put light. It is not that. It is psychological. It is an offering that you give to the divine. Remembering and offering to the divine. What are you offering? Anything that you think, anything that you um, can uh, emote and everything that you do also. Everything is offered to the divine. It is therefore through a sacrifice of love, works and knowledge. Okay, all the three. So if the ones, all the three. Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, Gnana Yoga. With the psychic being as a leader and the priest of the sacrifice. The word priest is interesting. The priest is always a go-between, between the human being and the divine. And in this case, in the interior yoga, the priest is the psychic being. In the very, very first um, Anuvak and the chapter of the uh, Rig Veda, the idea is Agni. Agni is the, the representative of the psychic being because it's a, a small flame right in the middle, deep inside your solar plexus area. And that is the <coughs> a small flame which is without smoke, pure. So that is the priest. It is a psychic being that puts you in touch with the divine. So he is a priest. He is also a leader. Okay. Purohitam is the word used. Yajasya Devam, Ritvijam. Ritvijam also is the same, a priest. Okay. So he is a Purohitam and a Ritvijam. And Sremna uses the same words. Purohitam is that who leads, who is put in front. Purohitam. Okay. 
so leader and priest of the sacrifice that life itself can be transformed into its own true spiritual figure now why is he using the word life itself because he has discussed that earlier life seems to be so so full of perversions and falsehoods and desires and dirt and mud cruelty and hate and rancor and anger all these things are in this uh, life but even that life itself there is using the word itself he could have very well used it without but when he is using the word itself it suggests that even the worst can be made into the best okay that life itself can be transformed into its own true spiritual figure and life at our level is the vital being and at the spiritual figure what is it, it becomes the chit shakti it becomes that full of chit consciousness and also energy if the sacrifice of love rightly done is easily the largest and purest offering we can bring to the highest this sacrifice of love is not less demanded of us now note that of us he is talking of the integral yoga he is not talking of the other yogas the other yogas can do they can do without love if they are a gnana yogi and they can do without gnana if they are a bhakti yogi so this is what shri is saying of us for our spiritual perfection it is even more intense and rich in its singleness and can be made not less vast than pure it can equal the knowledge knowledge also is usually very very knowledge is the <coughs> a great purifier in the gita it's very clearly said gnana dagdhena <coughs> the impurity is burnt by the fire of knowledge gnana agni gnana agni na dagdha it can be burnt by the knowledge knowledge is so pure that it burns the impurities but less simply saying love also can do that okay? more intense and rich in its singleness <clears throat> and can be made not less vast and pure the knowledge usually is described as vast and pure but simply use the word intense and rich in its singleness he has used three words for so intensity okay not necessarily broadness but intensity and singleness is a pointedness that is the sharp focus love can give you that knowledge usually gives you a broad mindedness you know he has used the word catholicity it is broad mindedness you have a wide knowledge and wideness means you become absolutely universal and calm and peaceful those are the attributes of gnana yoga but in the bhakti yoga it is intensity of passion love okay and <clears throat> attachment to the divine so singleness intense and singleness and also he has put rich can be made not less vast and pure this pure wideness is brought into the intensity of the sacrifice of love when into all our activities there is poured the spirit and power of a divine infinite joy and the whole atmosphere of our life is suffused with an engrossing adoration of the one who is the all and the highest so the all is a cosmic okay and the highest is the transcendent so it becomes transcendent cosmic and individual the engrossing adoration of the one at the individual the personal divine now note the word all love extended to the all so he is explaining also in the next sentence for then does the sacrifice of love attain its utter perfection when offered to the divine all in other words to everybody and to everything okay this is interesting because in the beginning your bhakti is only towards god and you are thinking only of god and then it extends itself to human human beings first of all it extends to your sadhak brothers okay those who are on the same path you extend your sympathy to them because you have a common guru and then later on it extends even to animals and plants and everything everything in the physical world becomes a source of love and beauty and joy okay so all to the divine all with an a cap it it doesn't exclude anything it becomes integral catholic catholic 
nothing to do with the religion wide wide mindedness and wide feeling also feeling also can be wide and boundless and when uplifted to the supreme that's a transcendent it ceases to be the weak superficial and transient movement men call love our human love is always weak it is ego bound superficial it is not deep and transient movement men call love and become the pure and grand and deep uniting ananda they then uh yasmin was very familiar with uh, amal uh, but i will tell a story about amal he wrote in a letter to um, shrimdo because he first his first wife was lalita okay <laughs> lalita and they had a divorce it didn't work out and he had, and he is complaining to shrimdo that i loved her so much and she is not responding in the right way so shrimdo comforts him and tells him that what is human love you are saying i loved her so much and so deeply is really human love so deep is it there is a letter for that okay so jasmin you can check that if you want <laughs> okay so so he says that human love is very shallow there is nothing essentially you may feel it is very deep but it is not like that okay that's what he is saying here the human love weak superficial hello hello yes sir yes, can tell. i can i quote a few lines from savitri about human love please go ahead <clears throat> love dies before the lover in our breast that's right love dies before the lover in our breast Our joys, our perfumes in a brittle vase. Mm. Oh, then what wreck is this upon time seas? To have for sail the hurricane desire, and for guide the unseen heart. Yeah. So <laughs> that's exactly. It. And even okay, it's very interesting. But even when um, death is arguing with Savitri. He tells her, "Then why are you so struck on Satyavan? Human love can easily somebody else will come and replace. It has gone to that extent. <laughs> okay, he says that there will be always somebody else also to love. So don't be so um, hell bent on only one. <laughs> okay, that is human love. Okay, it changes so easily. <laughs> so becomes a superficial and transient movement. Men call love." and becomes a pure and grand and deep uniting ananda it unites you to everything and everybody and also the divine transcendent cosmic and individual okay jasmin you can read the next one although it's a divine love <laughs> yes please go ahead <clears throat> <coughs> Although it is a divine love for the supreme and universal divine that must be the rule of our spiritual existence, this does not exclude altogether all forms of individual love or the ties that draw soul to soul in manifested existence. A psychic change is demanded. A, a diversity cure of the ma mask of the ignorance. a purification of the egoistic mental vital and physical movements that prolong the old inferior consciousness each movement of love spiritualized must depend no longer on mental preference vital passion or physical craving but on the recognition of soul by soul love restored to its fundamental spiritual and psychic essence with the mind the vital the physical as manifesting instruments and elements of the greater oneness in this change the individual love also is converted by a natural heightening into a divine love for the divine inhabitant in a in a mind and soul and body occupied by the one in all creature yeah okay so here he is exactly saying our love can be extended although it's a divine love for the supreme and universal divine supreme the transcendent 
the divine only the divine in himself without the universe but also universal divine he is there everywhere and whether it be animals or trees or anything you okay? you start and nature you start seeing the divine everywhere and that would love also comes in so supreme and universal divine that must be the rule of our spiritual existence this does not exclude altogether all forms of individual love or the ties that draw soul to soul in manifested existence we can extend our love to not only other souls but he is saying soul huh? not human beings necessarily even animals also we can extend okay for individual love the ties that draw soul to soul he is very very careful to use soul to soul and not human beings to human beings because it can include animals also in manifested existence in the physical world but altogether he has used the universal not exclude altogether some you it doesn't mean to say that you have to start loving everybody murderers and <laughs> thieves also you must have sympathy but you must be very careful as to how you apply your love the love can be essentially there but you must realize that you have to be careful in the physical world so exclude altogether he is use the word altogether so it is largely to be present but you have to use your discretion also a psychic change is demanded a diverse teacher of the masks of the ignorance going beyond the form masks of the ignorance beyond the forms there is the divine presence in everything and the word diverse teacher is very interesting to divest and to invest to invest is to put into something when you are investing money in a bank you are putting money into the bank expecting something to come out but diversity is exactly the opposite it's a redemption you redeem your amount you take it out so diverse teacher what are you taking out the where is it gone yeah of the mass of the ignorance you are taking out the coverings just like you eat a fruit you take out the covering okay you don't you need to go into the that is to be removed <coughs> and then the real stuff is inside so mass of the ignorance the outer form a purification of the egoistic mental vital and physical movements that prolong the old inferior consciousness don't be stuck only to the outer form but go deep into each one each movement of love spiritualized must depend no longer on mental preference vital passion or physical craving but on the recognition of soul by soul the soul has to recognize the soul love restored to its fundamental spiritual and psychic essence with the mind the vital the physical as manifesting instruments and elements of that greater oneness okay. now this recognition of soul by soul is very interesting that's exactly what happened when mother met shrivanda for the first time okay in fact if you refer back to the <coughs> Savitri, that description also you can see how soul recognized soul. They must have been together in many many lives. Okay, one life we know, Leonardo da Vinci and Mona Lisa, because that Chapaklal has made a point of that. So other places we don't know very clearly, but this was confirmed by Chapaklal. Mother one day told him that she she showed a picture of Mona Lisa to Chapaklal and asked him. Do you know who is the artist? And then she revealed Sri Aurobindo. That Leonardo da Vinci was definitely one of the lives of Sri Aurobindo. Okay, so this is a soul by soul because mother had seen a vision of Sri Aurobindo in Paris, but she didn't know who this person was, and she was very surprised. Also, she found in that vision that she is bowing down to him, and he, he was wearing a dhoti. and the beard was uh, you know all uh, not at all well arranged she has used these words in the uh, in french she has used uh, in barb fall okay <laughs> she has used the word fall uh, wild sort of so and she found uh, herself bowing down to him and she said i was very surprised who is this person and why am i bowing down to him but when she came to pondicherry 
soul recognizes soul immediately. Okay, so that is the interesting thing. Not the outer body. In Paris, when she was there, she didn't recognize the body. <laughs> But when she came here to Pondicherry, soul recognized soul. Soul. <clears throat> Love rests true to the fundamental spiritual and psychic essence, with the mind, vital and physical, as manifesting instruments and elements of that greater. In this change, the individual love also is converted by a natural heightening into a divine love, into a divine love for the divine inhabitant. Immanent in a mind and soul and body, occupied by the divine in by the one. Sorry, in all creatures. So he begins the paragraph with: First of all, the love must be for the transcendent and universal. He is ending the paragraph with the individual divine within you. Okay. So in other words, all the three: transcendent, universal, and individual in each one. Not only in yourself, but in everybody. So you must love in this way, complete. Okay. So we can go now to the next para. All love indeed. Shilpa, yeah, Tarika, you can read. All love indeed, that is adoration, has a spiritual force behind it, even when it is offered ignorantly and to a limited object. Something of that splendor appears through the poverty of the right and the smallness of its issues. For love, that is worship, is at once an aspiration and a preparation. It can bring even within its small limits, in the ignorance, a glimpse of a still more or more or less blind and partial, but surprising realization. For there are moments when it is not. Be but the one who loves and is loved in us, and even a human passion can be uplifted and glorified by a slight glimpse of this infinite love and lover. It is for this reason that the worship of the god, the worship of the idol, the human magnet or ideal are not to be despised, for these are steps through which the human race moves towards that blissful passion. And ecstasy of the infinite, which even in limiting it, they yet represent for our imperfect vision. When we have still to use the inferior steps, nature has hewn for our feet and admit the stages of our progress. Certain idolatries are indispensable for the development of our emotional being. Nor will the man who knows be hasty at any time to shatter the image. Unless he can replace it in the heart of the worshipper by the reality it figures. Moreover, they have this power because there is always something in them that is greater than their forms. And even when we reach the supreme worship that abides and becomes a prolongation of it, or a part of its catholic wholeness, our knowledge is still imperfect in us. Love incomplete. If even when we know that, even when we know that which surpasses all forms and manifestations, we cannot still accept the divine in creature and object, in man, in the kind, in the animal, in the tree, in the flower, in the work of our hands, in the nature force, which is then no longer to us the blind action of a material machinery, but a face and power of the universal Shakti. For in these things too is the presence of the eternal. Almost one page, but he is going into great detail and explaining how love can be very, very, very much widened everywhere. Okay, so it's interesting. So we have a quick look at each sentence. I'll read out and this: All love, indeed, <laughs> that is adoration. Okay, it has to be adoration, but not lust. Okay. All love, indeed, that is adoration, as a <laughs> sorry, has a spiritual force behind it, and even when it is offered ignorantly and to a limited object, something of that splendor appears through the poverty of the light and the smallness of its issues. The smallness of its issues, 
you may be going to a temple and you may be even asking for something it's a very small affair okay and the poverty of the right okay? because they write the right the ceremony is limited only to the physical okay that also is the poverty of the right the smallness of the issue but love that is worship is at once an aspiration and a preparation it's also it prepares you to become wider and purer it can bring even within its small limits in the ignorance a glimpse of a still more or less blind and partial but surprising realization you can find it yeah <coughs> and hear anything no so yeah who is that uh, archana okay <laughs> um, so <laughs> so that sound may not have been part of our uh, our participants it may have been something else so anyway so he is saying that love in every way okay however small it be and however impure there is always an element of truth in it okay so that's it of purity it can bring even within its small limits in ignorance a glimpse of a still more or less blind and partial but surprising realization every movement of love there is a truth to it however imperfect it be for there are moments when it is not we but the one who loves and he is loved in us okay? because love is essentially a, a divine emotion and even when it comes into a human being and becomes distorted still its origin is always divine and even a human passion can be uplifted and glorified by a slight glimpse of this infinite love and lover it is for this reason that the worship of the god the worship of the idol the human magnet or ideal are not to be despised for these are steps through which the human race moves for towards the blissful passion and ecstasy of the infinite which even in limiting it they yet represent for our imperfect vision when we have still to use the inferior steps nature has hewn for our feet and admit the stages of our progress big sentence we will have a look carefully at what is saying it is for this reason that the worship of the god okay so first of all is a worship of the god okay then you need it need not be the form but you may have a mental concept okay <laughs> then worship of the idol okay many people go to temples to worship the idol okay the stone god is or the metal in metal god a goddess or god whatever the human magnet so it can also be to a guru okay and he is a magnet he attracts the human beings or it can be even an ideal okay you may love the ideal that you have okay of humanitarianism of helping others or fighting for your country there is a certain amount of love even in patriotism na so they are not to be despised Whereas there are many religions who despise that. Even in India, we have the Arya Samajis who say the worship of the form is an act of stupidity and ignorance. It's not true. So I'm just saying very clearly, not true. He is, and he had the experience, na, on the bank of the Narmada. He had that experience in a dilapidated small temple. He saw the stone goddess, and he could see the divine presence. in that stone goddess okay so it's very interesting because there are many places where only the stone is there but not the divine presence in it all idols don't have the divine presence that is it's, it's a whole process they call it prana pratishtha okay i remember when i was in the press i was in touch with some marwadi people and they were jains so they were building a a temple in um, in katlo uh, 20 miles 20 kilometers from here and when they did that and the idols were all ready they had to call a priest who knows how to 
put the prana pratishtha into the idol and then it becomes jagrat otherwise it gets dilapidated and there are any number of uh, small 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 temples all over india which are neglected and the divine presence from there does not necessarily continue to say it may go away okay but there are others where it is absolutely living jagrat so this is the in fact that's what they do also when you are building dams in india some of the lower um, heights there are temples small temples and they get submerged so what they do they undo everything and take it to a higher level and rebuild the temple or it can even be a small um, place and the idol they remove the prana pratishtha from the idol and again put it back when it is established so this is the divine presence is there even in idols and so they saying it's wrong to criticize it or to consider it as something um, inferior okay not to be despised for these are steps through which the human race moves towards that blissful passion and ecstasy of the infinite even in limiting it they yet represent for our imperfect vision when we have still to use the inferior steps nature has hewn for us for our feet what are the inferior steps mind life and body they are the inferior steps okay and admit the stages of our progress so these are the stages of our progress also certain idolatries are indispensable for the development of our emotional being just know that indispensable is using the word cannot be dispensed with okay <clears throat> are indispensable for the development of our emotional being i'll mention something interesting here shrimdo's whole path towards the spiritual uh, perfection was it was uh, through the gnana yoga first he had the experience of the nirvana but even you wouldn't think that shrimdo would uh, worship okay but he had a small uh, vessel in which he had kept soil from that um, dakineshwar where ramakrishna was there he had a small <laughs> he had a small vessel in which he had kept that and when the police came to arrest him in calcutta they saw this one and then the police inspector he was a britisher he opened that and said he saw this mud like substance there and he thought it is bomb material <laughs> and shrimdo says in the uttar pradesh speech that he didn't know that it is much more powerful than bomb material <laughs> so that is the so there is no despising even the outer form okay so certain idolaters are indispensable for the development of our emotional being nor will the man who knows be hasty at any time to shatter the image unless he can replace it in the heart of the worshipper by the reality it figures so once you have got to the subtle presence of the divine in everything you need not continue to keep a outer form but the outer form is necessary in the beginning indispensable to the thing okay so in fact if you remember Shrimdo is signing his own photographs. Mother is signing her own photographs and giving to people. In fact, Shrimdo, in one case, he even told Aisha to keep. She was a young girl at that time. Dilip Kumar Roy's uh, niece, eleven year old she was, and he wrote to her saying, "Keep my photograph in front on the table and concentrate on it for some time every day." So this is the. idolatry is indispensable said they say nor will the man who knows be hasty at any time to shatter the image unless he can replace it in the heart of the worshiper by the reality it figures so, you know uh, there are people who uh, we had a a painter na a muslim painter he remember he was very famous and um, he had drawn uh, images of uh, in, uh, hindu goddesses and there was a huge outcry okay and finally he had to leave the country and go away <laughs> so these are all ignorant movements <clears throat> you have to it's not it's wrong to think that the form cannot hold the divine 
Moreover, they have this power because there is always something in them that is greater than their forms. And even when we read the supreme worship, the supreme worship, that means the most abstract, the transcendent, that abides and becomes a prolongation of it or a part of its Catholic wholeness. Even when you are worshipping the supreme divine without form, still that also can percolate into the other forms. Okay. When we reach the supreme worship, that abides and becomes a prolongation of it or a part of its Catholic wholeness. Our knowledge is still imperfect in us, love incomplete. If even when we know that which surpasses all forms and manifestations, we cannot still accept the divine in creature and object. So, if you love the divine even truly, but don't give that same love to creatures and objects in man, in the kind, kind is a species, okay, in the animal species, in the animal, in the tree, in the flower, everywhere this must come. In the work of our hands, so even that, huh? The work of our hands also, it has to be done with love. In the nature force, which is then no longer to us the blind action of a material machinery, but a face and power of the universal Shakti. For in these things too is the presence of the eternal. So, <coughs> beautiful. He is saying that love need not be limited. Even if it is limited, it is not to be decried. It is not to be despised because it's the beginning of the true movement. Okay, so we have five minutes and we can, I think, read one more paragraph. And okay. I'll tell you, yeah, go ahead. An ultimate thing adoration offered by us to the transcendent to the highest yet no complete worship if it is not offered to him wherever he manifests or wherever even he hides his Godhead in man and object and every creature. And ignorance is that no doubt which imprisons the increase the heart distorts its feelings, obstructs the significance of its offering. All partial worship, all, uh, all religion which erects a mental or a physical idol is tempted to veil and protect the truth in it by certain ignorance and lock of ignorance and easily loses the truth in its image. But the pride of exclusive knowledge is also a limit, a limitization and a barrier. For there is concealed behind individual love, obscured by its ignorant human figure, a mystery which the mind cannot see, the mystery of the body of the divine, the secret of the mystic form of the infinite, which we can approach only through the of the heart, and the passion of the pure and sense, and its attention, and its attraction, which is the call of the divine, flute player, the mastering compulsion of the all beautiful can only be seized and seize us through an occult love in yearning which in them and makes one of the forms and the formless, an indefinite spirit and the matter. It is that which is which the spirit in love is seeking here in the darkness of the ignorance, and it is that which it finds an individual human love is changed into the love of an immense divine incarnate in the material universe. Yes. Okay, so we have only three minutes left, so we can't do this one, but it's interesting what he's saying, because for him, for Sri Ramdo individually, it was Sri Krishna who was guiding him all the time. Okay. And so here he is using the word, the divine flute player. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> in fact, his association with the uh, Sri Krishna was right from the beginning, okay? Because <coughs> even in Baroda, when he was uh, sorry, when he was in uh, Calcutta, he when he heard the voice, a voice telling him, "Go to Chandranagar 
and go to Pondicherry twice. First in Calcutta, he heard the word "go to Chandranagar," and when he went there, he again heard the voice "go to Pondicherry." So, and he says, "I clearly recognize the voice." This is he recognized the voice. Okay, so he knew, and finally in Pondicherry, Sri Krishna even descended into him, and in jail also Sri Krishna. Was there guiding him and explaining to him the Gita, the inner meaning of the Gita, as well as the Vedas. Okay, he says that in his evening talks. So Sri Krishna for him was the <coughs> guiding personal aspect of the divine throughout his life. So he uses the word divine flute player. <laughs> okay, and they're all beautiful. Sri Krishna is often referred to as the Sarva Sundar. So he is. Uh, this is the aspect. So we'll look at this uh, next time, uh, a little more carefully. Okay. Okay. So we have to do. We'll redo this one. An ultimate inexpressible adoration offered by us. So Sunki, note down one fifty nine. An ultimate. We do an ultimate expression of adoration. Okay. Yes. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir, everybody. Au revoir, Rangada. Yeah. Thank you, Rangada. Okay. Au revoir, everybody. Au revoir, Rangada. Happy Pongal.